Times of darkness are certainly part of our journey in this life. But, thank the Lord, He never leaves us to face the darkness alone. One of the great blessings of the 23rd Psalm is the promise of the shepherd's presence. Thou art with me. Let's join Scott Pauley now as he continues this series, The Shepherd of the Shadows. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. You know, darkness and death are not new. In fact, mankind, from the very beginning of living uh, under the curse and as a result of sin, has had to deal with darkness and death. Think of it, darkness and death. In fact, this expression that is found most famously in Psalm 23 is not just found in Psalm 23. It's found in other places in Scripture, and it might surprise you to know that the first time it's recorded in Scripture is in the oldest book of the Bible. We believe that Job was written prior to even uh, the Pentateuch being recorded. So even before Moses wrote, Job lives before the patriarchs and before that, that period in Israel's history, and he writes the oldest book of the Bible. So go with me in your thinking today, in your Scripture if you're available, Uh, back in the book of Job, to Job chapter 3 and verse number 5. And listen to these words. Let darkness and the shadow of death stain it. Let a cloud dwell upon it. Let the blackness of the day terrify it. Do you hear the expression, the shadow of death? Uh, Same book of the Bible. Come forward to Job chapter number 10 and look at verse 21 and 22. Again, we find it. Uh, Before I go... Whence I shall not return, even to the land of darkness and the shadow of death. A land of darkness, as darkness itself, and of the shadow of death without any order, and where the light is as darkness. So there it is again, twice, this this idea of the shadow of death. And then again, Job chapter 24 and verse number 17. This is interesting to me. The Bible says, For the morning is to them, even as the shadow of death. If one know them, they are in the terrors of the shadow of death. Five times in these handful of verses, in the oldest book of the Bible, you find this expression, the shadow of death. And then, not only is this expression used in Psalm 23, most famously, it's used again in Psalm 44 and verse number 19. Uh, We do not believe necessarily that Psalm 44 uh, was written by David, but it could have been. But listen to the expression, Psalm 44, 19, Though thou hast sore broken us in the place of dragons and covered us with the shadow of death. This was an expression that was well known by the ancients and obviously well used by people in ancient civilization. It represented uh, that point of life where life ebbs away and suddenly you're staring death in the face. The expression, just in its very sound, uh, sounds like it's full of despair, the shadow of death. It combines darkness and death. I've read through the years some people describing a certain place in that part of the world that was referred to as the valley of the shadow of death, and it was a place where there was great danger and uh, people had to pass through there, travelers had to go through, and perhaps that's the case. Uh, But whether it is referring to a geographical location that David and those who were living in that period would have understood or not, it certainly is referring to a spiritual journey that every believer goes on. There are dark days, and yes, there are even days when death approaches. And yet, let's return to Psalm 23 and listen to the verse again. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. How is that possible? How is it possible that darkness comes and you're not afraid? How is it possible that death comes and you're not afraid? Well, the answer to the question is in the rest of the verse. You see, if you're looking, as I am at Psalm 23, verse number 4, you'll see that at the end of this statement, there is not a period. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. It has a colon after it. Forgive my grammar lesson today, but what does the colon suggest? The colon implies there's more to come after it, and what comes after it is connected. So listen to the next phrase. 
Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I remember years ago hearing hearing my pastor say that peace comes not in the absence of trouble, but in the presence of the shepherd. That stayed with me because what we think is, if I could just get rid of the trouble, I'd, I'd be at peace. No, no, you'll never get rid of trouble because Job also said, man that is born of woman is a few days and full of trouble. So we live in a world of trouble and everybody has things to deal with. You're never going to get to the place where there is nothing difficult with which to deal. If that's what you're waiting on, then you do have to wait to die to have any peace. But God has made a way so that you can have peace not after, but in the midst of. Not when the trouble is gone, but even when the trouble is around you, how is that possible? Through his own presence. When the Lord's presence is is real to us, now the Lord is always with us. He promised he's with us. But I'm talking about living consciously in his presence, meditating on his presence, enjoying his presence. When you are, in the in the words of some of the, the old saints, practicing the presence of God, when you're living in the reality of his nearness, his abiding presence, then you can say what the psalmist said, I will fear no evil. Why? Because the presence of Christ is greater than the presence of anything else. The presence of Christ is greater than your trouble. The presence of Christ is greater than the enemy. The presence of Christ is is greater than your circumstances. Fill in the blank. What is it you're dealing with today? Who is it you're dealing with today? Christ is greater. And so you can live with boldness. You can live with confidence. You can live with courage. Not something you muster up of yourself. Uh, Not not empty uh, self-conceit. I can do this. God forbid. No, I'm nothing. But the Lord is greater. And he promised that he would be with me. Thou art with me. I love the the declarative statement. The Lord says it to us, but here the psalmist says it back to him. Maybe what some of us need to start to do is accept that what God says is true and begin agreeing with him. Maybe it'd be good today if you took some of the promises of God and repeated them back to the Lord, not because he needs to hear it, but because you need to say it. You see, true faith is rooted in what God has already stated Uh, We're not coming up with something here. We're simply accepting what the Lord has already said. So listen to the expression again, the valley of the shadow of death. May I say to you today that whatever your darkness, Christ is with you in that darkness. Oh, I love this. Who is Christ? He's the light of the world. Who is God? God is light and in him is no darkness at all. So if there is a shadow, if there is some darkness with which to deal today, watch this, when the God of light is acknowledged in it, the Lord brings light into the darkness. And then not only darkness, but death, the shadow of death. Who is Christ? He's the resurrection and the life. Who is God? He is the one who delivers us, Hebrews says, from the fear of death. Death may draw near, uh, but we know the giver of life. We know the, the resurrected one. We know the one who gives eternal life, and because of that, we have no cause to fear. When you begin to fear God, the fear of God cancels out the other fears, crowds out the other fears, conquers the other fears because God is greater than all. I don't know what valley you're walking through today. I don't know what shadows descended on your path, and I don't know what death is staring you in the face, but I know this, the Lord is with you. Would you say that today? Say it to the Lord. Thou art with me. And when you can say that, you can also say, I will fear no evil. The presence of the shepherd makes all the difference for the sheep. And remembering that our shepherd, the Lord Jesus, is our constant companion, makes all the difference in the world for us, his sheep. Be sure to visit our website, enjoyingthejourney.org, for many helpful resources. We also invite you to find Dr. Scott Pauley on YouTube, where you'll find Bible messages that have been preached in various churches and meetings all across the country. We hope you will subscribe to the channel and then share it with others. On behalf of Scott Pauley and all of us at Enjoying the Journey, thank you for making this daily broadcast part of your life. And may God help you to enjoy the journey.